Hey guys, happy Sunday. I actually just filmed this video inside and I went to go edit it and my microphone wasn't plugged in and I was like, we cannot have that because I feel like this is something that I talk about so much on our channel. Like I'm always saying this verse because I love this verse and you know, being called for such a time as this, I feel like, you know, the world we're living in today, um, you know, just <laughs> with all the wickedness that is being exposed with all of the darkness that's coming into the light with her electronics just just um what's the word <laughs> growing rapidly just so much that's going on in our time um and it just feels you know kind of overwhelming and also in a way it's kind of like i have for me i haven't got married yet i haven't had kids yet i haven't done all these things and it can kind of feel just hopeless. I feel like we're in a time of, of hopelessness around us and um, especially my generation, but just all around the world, like people have just lost hope. But my parents always say to me, they're like, Taylor, nothing is new under the sun. Like, I know that it may feel like, you know, things are like, I always say like, how am I going to get a house? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Like, things are just really bad. Things are really like, I'm born in such a, like, it's going to be really tough for me. My parents were like, it was tough for us. Like, it's always been tough. Like, this world sucks. Like, and I just, I've been holding on to that because I've also been holding on to the fact that guys, as hopeless as things seem, like, we have such a gift. Like, as children of God, we have hope we have hope. We have hope that better days are to come. We have hope of what's to come for us, you know, and, and it's just, it's just such an amazing gift as a child of God that we've been given that we have hope in, in a generation that is hopeless in a world that's hopeless. And that's why we need to, you know, do everything we can to share the gospel and share the love of Jesus to bring people into, hey, we have hope over here. We have hope of what's to come. Like this ain't it. Okay, this ain't it. This world ain't ever been it. And that's why things feel like that. It's always going to be like that. Um, but I do, I will say, I do think that we are in an interesting time. It's an interesting time, you know, like I just said, with technology rapidly growing, with um, just so many crazy things happening. Um, not going to get into it. You probably see all my videos on my channel, but just uh, the wickedness being exposed you know, darkness bring, being brought into light, like, never, for, to me, like, I don't know, has, like, never before. I don't know. I, I watch, um, a lot of crazy stuff happening, uh, in the media. But anyways, I want to talk about being, uh, called for such a time as this. So today, I'm going to be pressing into Esther 4. If you don't have a Bible, you're totally good. I promise. You can lay back, close your eyes, and just picture what I'm uh, going to read to you. And then we're going to talk about four things that we can pull out of this. Because you've probably heard this verse before, like, you've been called for such time as this. But I don't know if you know the story around it. And we need context. We need the story. Because the whole story is like, wow. This is, um, in the story, we see how God is instructing us to walk what we're going, what we're supposed to do when we've been called into something. And we just see God move. Um, we see how God moves when we do things God's way and not our way. There's just so much to unpack here. Um, I'm excited and that's why I wanted to refilm this and make sure this is um, top tier <laughs> video. Maybe the Holy Spirit did it for a reason. Maybe I didn't say something that um, the Holy Spirit wanted to say. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to do this. So let's press into it. I also just want to give you a quick recap of what happened prior to this. So Esther, she just became queen. Esther is a Jew in secret. So the king does not know that Esther is a Jew. Okay. And she has a cousin, Mordecai, who used to basically, he, he stepped in as a fatherly role for her. Um, but he is also a Jew. And there is a man that the king basically elevated. Okay. His name is Haman. He's not that good of a guy. And he elevated him. How many people know somebody that got a position that they wanted, but somebody that didn't deserve it got that position? Well, God always has a reason, you know, even though it seems like, hey, he did not deserve that just wait, because God's, God's going to use this, okay? So, this man, Haman, was elevated, okay? But Mordecai refused to pay him honor. He refused to bow down and pay him honor. And he, this guy, Haman, was, like, pretty pissed off about this. So, he decides to convince the king, out of pride, out of his anger, he convinces the king that, hey, um, let's kill all the Jews. 
<laughs> because I just hate all the Jews. Look at anger growing. Look at pri what pride leads to. Like, such a heinous... Like, how could you even get to that point you know like his heart was such stone that it was like let's just kill all of them like <laughs> and the king who is not the brightest of the bunch he um he is easily so easily persuaded we see throughout the book of esther if you haven't read the book of esther and it's whole um and you haven't been following along with us you should don't totally go back because these this is it's just so crazy um but but the king not the brightest and he goes yeah sure like let's do it so all the jews have just been made aware that they are going to be killed Okay, so this is dark. Anyone that tells you the Bible ain't fun, ain't not fun, but um, like isn't crazy. Like it is so engaging. It is so insane to see like God move from. It's just crazy. I'm gonna go off on a on a rant. I don't want to bore you. Okay, so you can close your eyes, sit back, and listen. Or if you don't have a physical Bible to read along, I send out free Bibles. You can grab one um in the description box below this video. Just email me and I'll get you one. Okay. You need a physical Bible. Very important. Bible app ain't it. Well, I love the Bible app. It is it. Love the Bible app. Thankful for the Bible app. But having a physical Bible, you need to do it. Okay? It's it's a, it's different. On a different level. You'll understand when you get one. Okay? All right. I'm going to stop talking. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> when Mordecai learned of all that had been done, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the city, wailing loudly and bitterly. Just found out he's going to die. Okay? But he went only as far as the king's gate because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. What a sight that probably was. To just think about that, to get news of, hey, you're going to be killed um, in like what? I think it was 11 months they had, a few months that they had. When Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai, she was in great distress. She sent clothes for him to put on instead of his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, assigned to attend her, and ordered him to find out what was troubling Mordecai and why. So Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate. Mordecai told him everything that had happened to him, including the exact amount of money Haman had promised to pay into the royal treasury of the destruction of the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict of their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther and explain it to her, and he told him to instruct her to go into the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead with him for her people. Hathak went back and reported to Esther what Mordecai had said. Then she instructed him to say to Mordecai, all the king's officials and the people of the royal provinces know that for any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner court without being summoned, the king has but one law, that they be put to death unless the king extends the gold scepter to them and spares their lives. But 30 days have passed since I was called to go to the king. So pause really quick because that, that gives us an understanding of, you know, you do not approach the king. The king invites you and he also hasn't invited her for 30 days so it just goes to show you like she's basically saying like not much is going on here like i'm the queen but like i have not seen the king in 30 days like he hasn't uh, called on me um so she's saying like if i if i try to approach the king like i'm gonna be killed i will die i can't do that when esther's words were reported to mordecai he sent back this answer do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. I want to pause there because we see that Mordecai doesn't have faith in Esther. Mordecai has faith in God. He doesn't have faith in man. He has faith in God. And he's like, Esther, if you, if you don't do this, if you don't walk in the calling that you've been received, then, because God's calling on her to do this, if you're not going to do it, then God's going to call someone else. Like, because God is, God does not fail. And that, that convicted me because I'm like, shoot, like, if I don't, <laughs> if I don't do what God's called me to do, like, he's going to get somebody else to do it. And, and I don't want that. Like, I want to partner with God in that area. You know, I don't want God to be like, Taylor, like, I want to do this with you. Come on, let's do it. And I'm like, no, I'm scared. I'm going to partner with fear instead. I'm not going to partner with God. I'm going to partner with fear. It's basically what we're doing. You know, when we, when we refuse to walk in where God is calling us to walk. 
and it's like kind of just sad because he's like all right like let me see if i can get another child of god <laughs> to come through and do this you know god's like no let me let me partner with you and that's what that's what mordecai saying to her and he goes and who knows but you have come to your royal oh and my favorite person i'm messing it up and who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this got me really really thinking um well this verse always has me thinking um just because oh, it's just so crazy i was saying it all in the beginning of this video basically said everything i needed to say about it but it is just so crazy to be to be called right now guys it kind of gives me like some fire in a way because i'm like this is just crazy times like god's like i need some crazy children of god for these crazy times and he's got he's got me i don't know if he's got you but i'm i'm ride or die with my jesus and and i love that esther in this next part is too she says and this is cool because this is another point i want to make this is our third point i think um I was going to bullet these out, but whatever. But this is the third point is look at what happens when we encourage a brother or sister in Christ. Okay. And I've got to see that firsthand with your guys' comments, what you guys have done in my life. You have no idea. You have no idea the days that you guys have gotten me out of bed by your encouraging words. And because you guys have done that for me, I do it for other people now because I'm like, oh my goodness, this has made such a difference in my life. You know, iron sharpens iron. And I've went and I've message and emailed and dm'd and done all these things that like i take that shit i'm like i'm gonna reach out to this person and i'm gonna tell them like hey this video meant a lot to me or hey keep walking in the calling you've received because you're doing great like just little things like that guys like you have no idea like how much it can sharpen somebody and encourage somebody to walk in their calling and then just the ripple effect that that could have on everybody else around them in their lives so crazy so crazy to think about then esther sent this reply to mordecai go gather together all the jews who are in susa and fast for me do not eat or drink for three days night or day i and my and my attendants will fast as you do when this is done i will go to the king even though it is against the law and if i perish i perish this does not sound like the same esther um one chat ago where she was like i will die i am not going in there i'm not going in his presence i haven't seen the man in 30 days and mordecai is like he just encouraged her so much that she's like she he encouraged her to the point where she's like all right if i die i die like how did she get there she got there by brother or sister in christ his brother in christ that encouraged her and sharpened her and helped her walk in the calling that she received and we know at the end of the book of esther if you don't know already i'm not going to spoil the story but it it ends very very good because because esther did not bow down and to fear and she bowed down to god instead so Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. Okay, very last point I want to make before I close out this video. I thought was really cool. Something I really want to be pressing into more on this channel. Okay, because I am in such a season of, of this. Um, and you guys probably see my video. Um, I fasted for the first time and then this happened. If you haven't seen that, you should totally watch that. But yeah, I never fasted before, truly. Um, and I did for three days and it was, um, it was insane. And I have just been pressing into fasting more i've been trying to understand fasting more and i want to talk about it more on my channel so um, i'm learning about it i'm praying about it and i'm just you know trying to learn everything there is about fasting because it's talked about so much in the bible and it, i feel like it's not talked about enough by us and it's not talked about enough by us because i've been walking with jesus for three or four years now and it took me that long to fast guys chains break when we fast and crazy things happen when we fast and we see that you know before esther is going to embark on this big journey that god has for her before we're going to take a job position before we're going to make a really big decision in our marriage before we're going to propose to somebody like we these are very big things that we need to fast before doing and i feel like esther doing this is such a great example for us that god wants us to press into um that she's like you guys fast i'm gonna fast everybody fast and then we're gonna embark on this um on this mission that god has for us and partner with god so um yeah i thought this was uh i thought this was 
just probably my favorite part of Esther so far, maybe the whole thing, I don't know. Um, but I pray that you guys, you know, heard something today that was convicting for you or something that encouraged you. Um, like just something. Let me know in the comments because that that's just so awesome to see when you're like, oh my goodness, this God was totally speaking to me here when you said this. Like that's just so enlightening for me. It's just like the coolest thing. I'm like, yes, that is so awesome. All glory to God. That is amazing. Um, but yeah, I love you guys so much. Uh, the next Bible study into the book of Esther, if you really want to pick up on the story and see what happens next, um, I'm going to be doing these every, well, I already do these every Sunday. So the next one will be next Sunday after this one. Okay. So for our next Bible study, be here, be here or be square. I don't know. I forgot the saying. Okay. Um, I <laughs> love you guys so much. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday and I will see you guys for our next video on this channel. All right. Love you guys. Bye.